Jiro loved Halloween. Maybe she wasn't the kind of person that would be expected to love Halloween because of her disdain for horror, but she did. She loved the cheesy movies, the excuse to stuff her face with candy, the costumes, the decorations. It was absolutely her favourite holiday, and she definitely considered it a holiday. Halloween wasn't just a day to her, the whole month of October was Halloween, but with hero training and constant crises cropping up, she'd made it through three weeks of her favourite month without an ounce of Halloween festivity. When October the 23rd rolled around, she had started to think she ought to just give up on the whole thing. It wasn't as popular of a holiday in Japan, as it was a more western holiday, and with all the non-stop hero training, she didn't expect anyone to want to celebrate it. Aside from maybe Tokoyami. Hey Jiro! Kaminari approached her that day on their way back to the dorms after class. What's with the doom and gloom? You've been in a mood for weeks now. I haven't been in a mood, she snapped, her earphone jacks twitching in irritation, practically proving his point. Okay, maybe I've been in a bit of a mood, but what do you care about it? You're getting insufferable to be around, he said, elbowing her in the side playfully. But seriously, what's got you down? Nothing, just forget about it. Jiro picked up her pace a bit figuring this would be enough to show Kaminari she wasn't interested in conversation, but he just sped back up next to her. Don't be so difficult. He poked her in the side again, earning him a sharp glare from her. It's almost Halloween, and you haven't even worn one pair of your spooky socks. What are you talking about? An eye roll, a light laugh. She wouldn't take much, he said seriously, but she couldn't deny her interest was piqued. I know about your spooky sock collection, Jiro. You can't deny it. His cheesy grin caught her off guard, bringing a light blush to her face. You bragged to me in our first year that you had enough Halloween-themed socks to wear a different pair each day of October. You haven't even worn one pair yet. What? Are you observing what socks I wear every day? Because that's a bit much, even for you. Jiro raised an eyebrow. She didn't realize that he'd remember something that irrelevant from so long ago. She didn't know if she should find it weird or sweet. She decided on sweet. Well, it's not like I have a list of what socks you've worn, Jiro! <laughs> he let out a breathy laugh that sent chills down her spine. I just meant you usually are a lot more excited for Halloween. And this year you haven't even mentioned it. Everyone is busy with hero training. It's our last year, Kaminari. No one has time for something- Jiro! Oh my god! He interrupted, throwing his arm around over her shoulder. You can't just give up something you love because you think no one has time for it. Who said anything about love? Jiro grumbled, unable to meet Kaminari's eyes. His arm around her made her skin crawl, but also offered an unexpected comfort the pink dusting of blush across her cheeks, spreading to the tips of her ears. Okay, Jiro, play coy about your love for Halloween, but that won't stop me from making sure you have the best Halloween ever. Kaminari was silent for a moment before adding, Actually, I'll give you the best Halloween week. Like Halloween week. Just wait, Jiro. Okay, I picked up some movies. Now, I know you hate horror, so I have a few classic Halloween movies that are far from scary, Kaminari explained after dragging Jiro back to his room after dinner. But I also have a few scary ones if you decide to really get into the Halloween spirit. Yeah, well, let's stick to far from scary for now, Jiro huffed, but didn't protest any further. She'd initially been resistant, but she had to admit, not to Kaminari, but to herself, that it was kind of sweet of him. For now? He grinned and held out some of the movies. Okay, Jiro, take your pick! Why am I not surprised you got Halloween Town? <laughs> hmm. 
She chuckled, but took the DVD from him anyway, and popped it into his DVD player. She'd only heard a movie night in Kaminari's room a couple of times before, but she knew well enough, by now, how they'd go. That they'd sit on his bed, propped up with pillows, and eat junk food until they got bored of movies. But she'd never actually been here by herself. It felt slightly different without everyone else. Sitting pressed up next to Kaminari was different when the rest of their friends were with them. Part of being in a friend group of six people while hanging out in small dorms meant she'd gotten used to having little to no personal space. But even with the more space between them than usual, she felt her heart rate rising. Just sitting shoulder to shoulder with him had her stomach in knots. You seem tense. You aren't scared of Halloween Town, are you? Kaminari teased, leaning his head against Jiro's shoulder. I'm not scared of Halloween Town! The sudden contact almost made her jump, but after a few minutes she finally let her head rest against his. By the time their first movie had finished, she had finally gotten used to the weight of his head lying against her shoulder. In fact, when he stood up to put in the next movie, she almost missed having him next to her. Okay, Jiro. What movie now? Kaminari held out the movies for her to see again. If you don't like any of these, we can always stream something too. You said you had some scary movies, Jiro muttered, looking down at her hands. We can watch something scarier, if you want. Really? His eyes lit up as he bounced on the balls of his feet. You sure? Yes, dumbass. She rolled her eyes watching him pick up another movie and put it into the DVD player before jumping back onto the bed next to her. You can hold my hand during the scary parts if you need to, he said with a cheeky grin that made her stomach do a backflip. Shut up. And he did, but as the movie went on, she ended up taking his hand anyway, ignoring his slight smirk when she did. Eventually, she found herself holding on to Kaminari for dear life burying her face in his chest as he ran his hand down her back repetitively to soothe her. Maybe the horror movie wasn't so bad, because even though she was shaking with fear, being comforted by Kaminari was actually very nice. Jiro, you're not even watching anymore. <laughs> Kaminari's laugh shook her slightly in his arms, but she didn't move. Hearing it is enough for me. She muttered in reply, still not pulling back from Kaminari. Well, we can change movies if you want to. He ran his hand through her hair, and she let out a soft sigh. Don't you girl, I'm not a coward. Her response was muffled by his shirt, and he just laughed again before pulling her onto his lap so that it was easier to hold her. Jiro, the movie's over, Kaminari said after a while. She just mumbled something under her breath and pulled back from him, laying back on his bed. I'll never sleep again, she said as she stared up at the ceiling, and Kaminari crawled over to lay next to her. Do you need to stay here for a little bit longer? We can watch something not scary to get your mind off of the horror movie. She bit her lip as she considered his offer before daring to answer. Can... can I just stay here tonight? As soon as she asked, he had already begun nodding his head. Of course, of course! He smiled lightly, and she felt her face growing warm again. Do you want me to sleep on the floor, or do you need to be held? I don't need anything, she interrupted, and he bit his lip to hold back his laughter again. But if you were scared and needed to, that'd be okay. Ugh, you're really gonna turn this on me? He pouted, and she flicked him with her earphone jack. Fine. I'm so scared, Jiro. Please stay and comfort me. Please. If you insist. She tried not to smile, but it was hard to hold her back when he was looking at her with that cheesy look he always wore when she teased him. She slipped under the comforter and pulled the blankets up around her. He got the message and settled down next to her putting his arm around her and letting her rest her head against his chest. Good night, Kaminari. Night, Jiro.
So, what's with you and Drooly? Bakugo hissed from the seat next to her as class drew to a close. Frankly, this was the last thing Jiro expected. Bakugo rarely paid any attention to who she spent her time with. Nothing? What do you care of it anyway? She glanced quickly to her right, making sure Kaminari was still busy talking to Kirishima. Kuh. I don't, Bakugo scoffed, as if it was an insult to even insinuate he'd care about something so petty. Dumbass just never turns down an opportunity to hang out with Kirishima and I. But he said he couldn't hang out all week because he had plans with you. He said he had plans with me all week? Jiro raised her eyebrow. She knew that Kaminari was planning to make sure she had a good week leading up to Halloween, but she didn't expect him to become so dedicated to it. That's what I just said. He shook his head and started to pack up his bag, slinging it over his shoulder before joining Kirishima. Jiro! Kaminari's hand on her shoulder made her jump. Okay, so today we're going to make Halloween-themed cookies! You've thought of everything, haven't you? She smiled, a bit too smitten with the blonde's attempts to get her in the Halloween spirit. Of course! He grinned, throwing his arm around her. She didn't know when he'd started to get comfortable with the gesture, or when she stopped pushing him away. However, she was glad she did. Why are you doing all this? She voiced, the reoccurring thought on their way back to the dorms. Because I don't want you to miss out on your favorite holiday, he said as if it was the simplest thing in the world. But why do you care? Why do you even care? When she asked this, he frowned, squeezing his shoulder lightly. Because I care about you. His voice was barely a whisper and caught her completely off guard. And you call me the dumbass. Hey, she poked him in the cheek with her earphone jack. I guess, um, uh, I care about you too. The rest of the walk back to the dorms was uneventful, but Jiro couldn't help but wonder what he really felt. His eyes had been so soft and sincere as he spoke. She couldn't shake the feeling he might have meant much more. Uh, that might have been the nicest thing you've ever said to me. Kaminari faked wiping a tear from his eyes and grinned at her. Don't make me regret it. She rolled her eyes and swung the door to the dorms open, following Kaminari into the kitchen. He opened up the fridge and pulled out some boxes of cookie dough. <laughs> I figured you since you suck at baking, we'd stick with the basics. Just put the dough on the sheet. I know how to make ready-to-bake cookies, obviously. She snatched the box from his hand and began pulling the cookie dough out lining it onto the sheet and then popping a piece in her mouth. Jiro! He exclaimed, swatting her hand away from the cookie sheet. You need to leave some for us to bake! It was just one piece. She stuck out her tongue at him and grabbed another piece of cookie dough from the tray. I knew this would happen, he said, shaking his head before pulling out a second box of cookie dough. That's why I got two boxes. You're the best. The autumn wind picked up and ruffled Jiro's hair as she walked to her favorite cafe after classes. It finally, was finally, starting to feel like Halloween. The air was crisp and cool. Kaminari had convinced the rest of the class to decorate the dorms, and there'd been candy aplenty for her to snack on. Hey Jiro! A cheery voice called to her from the other side of the road. Popping her earphone jack out of her phone, she looked around before her eyes fell on Mina, waving violently at her. A raven-haired girl stood next to her, laughing into her hand at Mina's enthusiasm. Hey, Mina. Hey, Momo. Waving back at them, she crossed the street to join them, smiling wildly at her friends. Where are you heading? Mina asked, leaning against Momo as they talked. Jiro contemplated the question for a minute. If she said she was going to get coffee, Mina and Momo would want to tag along. She hadn't hung out with them as much recently, so she decided to just come clean. 
Um, snuck off to grab some coffee. Kaminari went on a Halloween decorating rampage. Oh! Can we join you? Momo's response was as expected, and Jiro simply nodded in compliance. Good. We can catch up. So, are you going to the Halloween party? This was a question Jiro had been dreading. She knew about the party and had already decided not to go. The last thing she wanted was to spend the whole evening feeling like a third wheel to all of her friends who had already gotten dates or were going with their boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever. And it was going to blow. No, she muttered, looking down at her hands as she started to lead the way to the coffee shop. It's just gonna suck. Everyone's dating or going with dates. I don't want to spend my Halloween like that. Are you not going with Kaminari? Momo tapped her chin, and Jiro just stared at her. Why? Why would I be going with Kaminari? Her stomach squirmed again. Would Kaminari even want to go with her? Sure, he'd done all this great Halloween stuff for her, but wouldn't he want to go hit on random girls or something during the party? Because he's practically obsessed with you? Ugh! Mina groaned. It's always Jiro this, or Jiro that, or, oh, what's Jiro doing today? Let's go see Jiro- What are you talking about? Jiro interrupted, her earphone jacks twitching menacingly. Jiro, oh my god, he's got the biggest crush on you! There was a thump as Mina hit her on the top of the head with her palm. Get it through your thick skull! If he likes me, why has he never asked me out? Because you're scary! Momo snorted in amusement at Mina's outburst. <laughs> oh, you, you are kind of intimidating. The kind smile that Momo offered didn't lessen the blow. So you're saying he won't ask me out because he's scared of me? Her brow furrowed, squinting her eyes. You do kind of give off the vibe of someone who could crush someone's heart under your shoe and then keep walking. That's disgusting. Jiro crinkled up her nose at the stench of the pumpkin Kaminari had just gutted. It just smells like pumpkin. There was a squelching sound as he dumped the pulp into the kitchen sink, likely earning them a scolding from Ida in the near future. It's the price you must pay for jack-o'-lanterns! Twirling the knife in his hand, Kaminari began to work on cutting open the next pumpkin. Keep spinning the knife like that and you're going to lose a finger. That'd be bad, he said absentmindedly as he carved out the center of the second pumpkin. What should we carve them into? I'm going to give my pumpkin your jamming way face. That remark earned Jiro an elbow to the side. Are you seriously going to immortalize that in pumpkin form? His question was answered by a series of vigorous nods from Jiro. The girl began to work at the pumpkin with a smaller knife, screwing up her face in concentration. This is going to be a work of art. Trust me. As soon as Kaminari cleaned out the second pumpkin, he began to work on carving it, making a very big deal out of turning it away from Jiro so that she couldn't see what he was carving. Remind me, before we put candles in them, we need to put cinnamon in the bottom to make it smell nice. Where'd you learn that? She snorted, flinging a chunk of pumpkin into the trash can. I researched jack o before today! He grinned. And Jiro raised her eyebrows in disbelief. What? I did! Nothing but the best jack o lanterns for you! You're so... She wasn't sure what she meant to say. It wasn't stupid. It was sweet. But she couldn't bring herself to say that yet. Hey, look! He spun his jack o lantern to face her after a while of concentrated quiet. The face looking back at her shared her triangular facial features and even had her under-eye paint drawn on in Sharpie. It's an earphone jack-o'-lantern! You're such a dork, she sputtered, 
poking him in the cheek with her earphone jack as he grinned at her. When Kaminari had announced that Thursday would be another Halloween movie marathon, Jira was fairly content with it. That was until she realised that the rest of their friends and classmates wanted to join in. And so the movie night began with Jiro sitting on the couch next to Mina and Momo, who were already cuddling and whispering to each other. Maybe it was selfish, but Jiro had just wanted the night to be her and Kaminari. She wanted to sit with him, to have an excuse to hold on to his arm, to see his stupidly big grin each time she made a snarky remark. Jiro, why are you pouting? Kaminari whispered into her ear coming up from behind her with a bowl of popcorn. I'm not pouting, she insisted, jumping slightly in surprise at the sound of his voice. He must not have believed her, because he squeezed into the space between her and Mina, leaning his head against her shoulder. Don't worry, we aren't going to watch any horror movies tonight. His arm shifted to rest against her shoulder, as he gave her a cheeky smirk. But you can still hold my hand if you want. You wish. At first, Kaminari's idea to visit a nearby carnival was something she was looking forward to. That was until Mina, Sero, and Kirishima decided to tag along, dragging Bakugo along with them and immediately suggesting they go through the haunted house. No way. Nope. No! Jiro's incessant protesting was cut off by Mina throwing her hand over her mouth. If we don't all go in, it won't be fun! The pink-haired girl insisted, grabbing Jiro by the wrist and pulling her into the line with the rest of them. We'll all be with you. It'll be fine! This was the last thing she wanted to be spending her Friday night. Stuck in a stupid haunted house with her friends that would definitely tease her for screaming and freaking out and would definitely never let her hear the end of it, she turned to Kaminari for comfort. But by the time they'd made it to the front of the line, she had already laced her fingers together with Kaminari, holding his hand as if it were a lifeline. Jiro, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I can pretend to be sick or something, if you want. If I chicken out now, Mina will never let me live it down. And she'd totally see through you faking sick. Jiro hissed back, squeezing his hand even tighter. But thanks. Just don't let go. I won't. His dimly lit features smiled back at her as they stepped into the haunted house, entering the first pitch black room. The silence was excruciating, but when the first jump scare broke it, Jiro practically leapt into Kaminari's arms. The further into the haunted house they went, the more horrifying it became. Well, horrifying to Jiro, at least. Mina and Karishima seemed to be completely unbothered, while Bakugo just complained about the cheap jump scares and tacky costumes. Only Sero and Kaminari looked slightly spooked. When a particularly loud screech followed a skeleton popping out from behind a corner, Jiro almost tripped over her own feet. At that point, Kaminari took pity on her, crouching down to hoist her onto his back to carry her. <laughs> Don't strangle me! <laughs> he chuckled when she wrapped her arms around his neck, tightening her grip at each slight scare. They finally found their way out of the haunted house, Jiro burying her face in Kaminari's shirt in fear while her friends laughed and joked around. Jiro, smile! Mina cooed snapping a picture of her riding on Kaminari's back. Cute! You're lucky I'm still frozen with fear or I'd kick your ass! Jira grumbled, unmoving from resting on Kaminari's back. Can we just go get food or something? Sure! Kaminari agreed, turning his head slightly so that she could hear him better. Are you gonna get down yet? No. When Halloween finally rolled around, Jira was a bit stumped. 
She hadn't actually gotten around to planning out a costume, so she just threw on a short black dress and a witch's hat. At this point, she wasn't really worried about the costume or the party. She was ready to find Kaminari and admit her feelings. After all he'd done to cheer her up, she was finally done holding back. She couldn't hold back after all he'd done for her this week. With three sharp knocks, she waited at Kaminari's door. She was feeling pretty good about herself, knowing that Kaminari liked her and wanted to be with her. Just seeing how much he cared for her and helped her move past her fears, the door swung open to reveal Kaminari's massive grin. Hey, Jiro! A headband with two horns, a red button-up shirt, black skinny jeans, and a pair of costume devil wings made up his costume. Hey, Kami. Cute witch costume, he mumbled, a light blush dancing across his cheeks, a similar shade to his shirt as his eyes trailed over her body. Thanks. Nice devil costume. <laughs> a small laugh slipped from her lips, and she stepped into his room. I was thinking, maybe I could get you to take me to the Halloween party. <laughs> Sounds more like you're indirectly asking me to the party. He grinned his overly large Cheshire cat grin. Don't push it. She rolled her eyes, but she couldn't hold back a small smile, taking him by the hand as they walked back over to the school. She wasn't sure who had done it. Maybe it was Mina, but somehow they'd gotten permission to use the cafeteria for the party. What she hadn't expected was that everyone would be there. Even people from the lower classes were there. Are you doing okay? Kaminari tugged on her arm when he noticed her stop at the edge of the crowd. Didn't expect so many people to come. She pulled on her earphone jack nervously. I guess I should have known the other classes would be here, since it's in the cafeteria. Kaminari frowned and then grabbed two candy apples from a nearby table. Follow me. He didn't wait for a response, pulling Jira around the crowd and out of the cafeteria, up a flight of stairs until they were at the roof. How about we hang out up here, away from the crowd? That's good. The air was a bit chilly, but the sky was clear and beautiful. He handed her a candy apple, and she tried to hold back a smile before biting into it. Thanks. No problem. The way he looked at her almost scared her. His eyes were soft and full of warmth. It was all so sickeningly sweet. Candy apples, loving gazes, feelings unspoken. Thank you for doing all this stuff for me this week. I really appreciate it. It was really sweet. And I wanted to tell you that her breath caught in her throat as he put his hand on her shoulder and the apple fell from her hand in surprise i really like you jiro her heart felt as if it had leapt up into her throat as her voice hitched i really like you too soft sweet lips caught hers the faintest taste of candy apple still lingering the witch hat tumbled off her head as he tangled his fingers in her purple locks, his other hand settling on her waist. Eyes fluttering open, meeting after the heated kiss as a blush they shared spread across both their faces. He was right. It was the best Halloween she'd ever had.